Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through an install of Linux, a customization after that with Ansible, and it's gonna take less than five minutes of interactive time. First up, we've got the root disk in the USB slot, and we're gonna boot into a new installation. This is Xubuntu, um, it's the latest release. The first thing we gotta do is get the OS installed. So, standard installation process. We're gonna install, get the keyboard set up the way we want it. Important to get the keyboard Right, of course, um, I've been caught out many times having the keyboard set incorrectly and then, you know, passwords don't work because special characters are wrong. I don't have any special third party stuff in here on this laptop, so I skip through that. When it gets to my hard disk setup, I use LVM so that I can then encrypt the hard drive. Setting a security key. The, the key I'll set is relatively short just so that I can type it in again for the purposes of the, this demo. Um, I don't need to overwrite disk space because the previous installation was also encrypted. The keys for the disks will get wiped as part of the new installation. So the stuff that's on there is just random bits as far as anybody else is concerned once I've wiped the keys. I accept whatever x two thinks is a good layout on disk. I set my time zone, I set myself up a user account. So this is a single user machine, there's only, only me that uses it. So I use the same password for my hard disk encryption and for my login, um, focusing more on getting a long, strong password that I can remember and having lots of weaker ones. Um, if this was, say, a Mac or a Windows machine, then I think the password for to decrypt the hard drive and to log in would be the same anyway. This is a standard x to install process, switch through installing the packages for the OS. I would say this is the minimal install as well. I would recommend the minimal install for a workstation like this. There's a lot of junk basically um, in the full install. So removing as much as possible, or at least what you want to think is a minimal installation. And then just installing what you want. You know you're starting from a much leaner, lighter distribution. When you run updates, you'll see a lot of fewer packages trying to update all the time. It's a bit easier to see what's going on. Okay, so we're now at five minutes, five minutes 30 or so, and we're logging back in. Well, we're logging into the new installation anyway. It was about two minutes, two minutes 50 or so um, on the video, so it's been a couple of minutes of interactive time so far. Okay, so having logged back into the installation, I'm logging to my network, I skip, skip that section so that you can't see my, my neighbor's access points. I've got a new USB stick, which has my xubuntu underscore workstation repository contents on. There's a script that sets it up for me. Um, I mount that, open it, open a terminal in that directory. And the first thing I've got to do is go in and reset the root password. By default, uh, in Ubuntu, you don't use roots. It has no password, you can't log into it. You use sudo. Doesn't seem to be compatible with Cyber Essentials though. Um, you, that does require that you have a separate admin account. So I set a different password for that doesn't I'm, not, I'm probably not going to use it again after this initial install so i set it long and fairly random and then just keep that keep that somewhere physically um, in case i do need it in the future cd back into the directory that is my setup script and i've got a bootstrap.sh which runs through the rest of the install first thing that happens um runs at update pulls all the latest versions of all the packages that were installed as part of the operating system a moment ago as it's happening at the moment. After that, as I'm, the stuff you can see on the screen, the windows opening, is me trying to turn off power management so the video um, doesn't turn off halfway through. In a moment, we'll be done with the updates and I'll install Ansible so that I can run the Ansible playbook that does all my customizations. Should be there in a moment. You can see Ansible installing now. That's the playbook starting, and you'll, this is, this is going to whip through at a fairly um, accelerated pace because some of these steps do take a long time. Um, setting up my sudo, restricting my access there, selecting out sudo as group, installing VS Code, setting up um, SSH, setting the permissions correctly, installing Slack. Um, in a moment we'll go installing Chrome, setting Chrome preferences so that you'll see I've, I've got extensions that I want and my the default browser password manager is turned off. The red text on the screen is a network glitch, I think. Um, I'm running on Wi-Fi and battery at the moment because I need the laptop over there where the camera is rather than where it normally is where I can plug it in. So yeah, 
once I reconnect to the network, run through the install again, it shows one of the things about Ansible. It, one of the reasons that I ended up choosing Ansible is because it is able to kind of figure out it's already done certain things that would have been quite time consuming, just skip straight past them. Then I very much speed it up, reboot and back into the operating system. I'll just show you just to prove that this is set up. So I've got Chrome installed. That went to win there. In the default, you'll see I've got my extensions that I have to set up. I've got two password managers, one that I use for work, one for personal, that I had set up in Chrome. They've been installed automatically. You'll see the Chrome's password manager has been turned off as well. Some other security settings have been turned on. Docker PS, so out of the box. Docker rootless, this is. If you've ever seen Docker rootless set up, it's a bit involved. Um, but it's just this is just ready for me to use now. Um, I can run a Docker image, uh, Docker container, the Hello World Docker container. My HTOP tooling that I use is installed there as well. And that's the end of the, the video. Um, we were sitting at a wall clock time of about 21 minutes by the time I booted back into this desktop. It was about five minutes of interactive time. So you saw how long some of those steps were taking. Some of the parts of the video were speeded up quite, quite, quite a lot. There's a section where the playbook was installing was speeded up 20 times speed. If you do, if you try and do this interactively, it takes it takes forever to install to get all this stuff installed, and then you've got to configure it, and then hopefully you did it right and didn't make a mistake. This way, most of it is unattended. Um, it works the first time, um, and I have things like GitHub Actions on the repository giving me some test coverage, so that I can be fairly confident that it is going to work when I come to actually use it on a real laptop. And I'll leave this video there.